Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm combining Adobe Firefly with Topaz Studio 2 to make this floral art image. Sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Today I am using this image that I created in Adobe Firefly. I'm going to send it into Topaz Studio 2 and turn it into a painterly type image. As I said, I started out in Firefly and I basically just used a simple prompt, as you can see here, bouquet of flowers. The only other thing I did was under styles in the popular group, I used layered paper, clicked refresh and generated some images. Now you could keep clicking refresh and generating more and more images, but when I got one that I liked, I went ahead and saved it. And by the way, I use the aspect ratio of 16 by 9. There's a drop down here if you click it. You have landscape, portrait, square, or widescreen. I chose widescreen because I knew I was probably going to crop out this image. After I did some experimenting with Firefly and found an image that I liked, I went ahead and downloaded it into Photoshop. Now here I am in Photoshop, and this is the image that I liked. And you can see it's got the Adobe Firefly beta watermark. Image not for commercial use, at least not at this point in time yet. There's a little weird line down in here. I don't like this little area under this flower here, so I did a little bit of cloning and got rid of that. Ended up cropping the image in, and now it looks like this. Now, just to let you know up front, Firefly files are gonna be smaller files, so you will have to upscale them because you won't really be able to get a decent sized print out of them. And don't forget on this image, it was a widescreen that I even cropped in. So I definitely needed to upscale it. And I used Topaz Gigapixel AI to do that, which does a fantastic job for upscaling images. And Topaz Photo AI would work just as well. But you can't use Photo AI inside of Photoshop. You have to use it as a standalone app. But you can run Topaz Gigapixel AI right from within Photoshop. Now that I've upscaled the image, I'm ready to send this into Topaz Studio 2. So I'm just going to come up here in Photoshop's menu, click on Filter, and find Topaz Studio 2. Click on that, we'll launch Topaz Studio 2, and I'll show you how quickly we can turn this into a painterly image. Using a great filter in here, I'm going to click Add Filter, and you're going to find it in the Stylistic section here, and it's called Impression, so I'm going to click on Impression. And as soon as I do that, it already takes on a whole painterly type look. If I left click on the canvas, you can see there's the before. And when I release the left click, here is the after. So I really like it so far. But let's see if we could take this further. Now, I always like to start out trying different paint strokes out on the image. And I just keep clicking through. And as you can see, when I click on these, it takes on a different look. And I ended up working with this, and I, that one looks pretty cool too, kind of sketchy, but type 08 right here. Now I know that looks really kind of weird at this point, but check this out. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna drag this bar down and come down to texture. And as soon as I come into texture here, I'll change the background type from solid to original and all that light in the background went away. Let me go back to solid again, and you can see. That's the canvas actually showing through, which can be pretty cool for a certain type of, of an effect. But if you go to original, that will let all that disappear. And now I'm gonna go and drag back up. And now that I have my stroke picked out, I need to figure out the number of strokes. If you do a low number of strokes, you're gonna get a more abstract look, medium, a little more detail, and high, a lot more detail. I chose medium. And then, of course, you can adjust brush size here, and this will make your brush a larger brush. As you can see, when I really drag that up, you can see the strokes become a lot bigger, and that looks really cool right there. I could be done right now at this point right here if I wanted to, but I'm going to go back to the settings I originally chose. I'm going to double-click this. This defaults at 50, and then you have paint volume. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to go to paint opacity, and if I drag this to the right, you can see like the paint really starts to show through. With this particular stroke, it doesn't show through as much. As you can see, it's a very thin stroke. So I'm gonna take this back to like 60 is where I settled on. 
And now stroke rotation. If I drag this to the right, watch the strokes here, especially down in this area right here. You can see the strokes will start to rotate. You see that? See them rotating around. So this is cool. You just adjust it to where you think it looks good for your eye. And I think I like mine right around here, like an 11, like a slight angle to those strokes. And next I went to uh, stroke width. Now, of course, you can add uh, rotation variation or stroke color variation. If I drag this to the right, it'll start to vary those colors. You see that in there? So it adds a little bit of color in there. You could get really exaggerated here if you want to go with a more abstract look, and that looks kind of cool, right? But I'm not using that. And now we can work with the stroke width. And I'm going to drag this to the right, and this will just widen out those strokes. You see, as I really start to move it, you can see... Not a whole lot is happening because that stroke is pretty narrow to begin with, but I drug this over to right about here, 40, and now I'll adjust the length of the actual stroke. So let me start to drag this to the right and see how those strokes get longer or they get shorter if I go to the left. But if I go the whole way to the right, you can really see the exaggeration of those strokes. And that actually looks pretty cool, too. It's hard to decide where to stop on this stuff. But I ended up going right around here. Actually, I'm going to go make those a little bit longer because I like all the little wispiness that's happening back in here. I think that looks really nice. In the next adjustment, Spill, it actually lets the paint spill out. So if I drag this to the right, you can see how the paint will start to spill out, giving it more of an abstract look. And that's kind of cool, too. But I let mine pull out a little bit, and I went to like a 34. So I'm getting a nice, wispy, abstract look here. And now one of my favorite adjustments, and that is painting progress. It simulates how the painting evolves as you're starting to build up all your paint strokes. So I usually like to take it to the left, okay, and then just start to drag it slowly to the right. And when I find a point that I really like, you see how the painting evolves and changes? When I find a point that I really like, I'll just stop. And it's looking really cool. I kind of like it right there. Let me keep going a little bit further. And maybe a little bit more. Okay, let's see. Right there. I think that looks cool. Right there. I'm going to stop there. Now, again, if you left click and hold with your mouse, there's the before and there's after. But look how that image has really changed and I really like this look that I'm getting. Now I think I want to work on the color a little bit and the nice thing about this impression uh, filter is we have a lot of adjustments in here. We have color and lighting in here and texture. I'm going to work with color so let's click on this color drop down. This is basically an HSL filter, hue, saturation, and lightness. Now we can work on the overall color, this block right here, and then we break the colors down into individual colors that we can work on. We can work on the hue, saturation, and the lightness. I want to desaturate the overall image, so I'm going to take this overall saturation, and I'm going to drag it back to, say, right here at minus 40. Now that I've done that and I like the overall look, I want to bring my oranges and my reds up. So if I hover over orange, you see those little red lines in there? That lets me know all the areas that have some orange tint to them. So I'm going to click on orange, and I'm going to start to drag orange up. Now it'll only target orange, and I'm going to bring it up to around, I don't know, maybe around like 85. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe back a little bit. 83. How's that sound? Now I can adjust the lightness of that if I want to, or I can make it darker by pulling this left lighter to the right. But next I want to go to red. So let me click on the red block and I want to bring the saturation up on those reds. So I'm going to start to drag it to the right. And I think right around 70. So now I've overall desaturated the image somewhat. And now I brought up oranges and reds. And now if I left click on the canvas, we can see here's the before and here's the after. So we have a nice big dramatic change. And I really like this painterly look I'm getting. But next I'm going to go to texture. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit here. And what I want to do is, and I picked one out here, concrete rough. So I'm going to click on concrete rough. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the image here. And what I'm going to do is add some of that texture. Let me drag this texture slider to the right. And you see that texture starting to come in there? 
and I think I'm going to take it to right here, 69. And now we can adjust the size of that texture. If I drag this size to the right, see how the texture gets a lot larger? But I'm going to drag it back to the left to, I think, 0.42. So I think that looks really cool there. But you see that little bit of concrete texture in there? I think it really adds to this image. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. But now we have a nice little texture in there. And I'm really happy. Let me left click one more time. Here's the before. And now here is the after. I really like it. And I think I'm done. I'll just come up to the menu and click accept. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. And now here is the before. And now the after. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. Hey, if you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.